Hello everybody. My name is Michael Stockstill and I'm going to be your instructor for Gen Chem 1 this term. In this video I'm going to give you a tour of our virtual classroom, give you some idea of the different activities that we're going to be doing and the assignments that are going to be due. Um, this is going to be an entirely online lecture, um, which means that we're not going to have any regularly scheduled times when we're going to be meeting together to do the lecture portion. Instead, I'm going to provide you with different kind of handwritten materials and videos that I make for myself. And uh, some of you guys might really like this, right? This might be exactly what you're looking. It's going to give you the flexibility in your schedule that you need. Um, and some other people might have like a little bit of anxiety about this, right? Like you're kind of out there just all by yourself. Uh, but I want you to know that you can always reach me via email. Um, please go ahead and send me an email directly from your Mod Gmail account to my Mod Gmail account. Uh, it really makes it easier for me to like respond with like pictures and attachments and stuff like that. Uh, I usually respond really, really quickly and I can usually uh, really help resolve any kind of issues very quickly through email. Um, sometimes though it gets a little bit more complicated and we have to schedule a zoom meet, which is always going to be fine. Um, I block out a lot of time during my week to meet with the students. Um, so please feel free to contact me early and often whenever you need any help. Once you reach canvas dashboard here, the first thing we're going to need to do is find our class. Yours is going to look like this one. Chem 131, WW01, winter of 21-22. So the first place that you're going to land uh, once you're in the course is going to be this landing page here. Uh, you're going to find a little welcome message from me here. And then uh, my contact information. Uh, it's got my name there. And then uh, my email address. And again, I would prefer if you guys email me directly from your my email account, that Gmail account to mine, um, and avoid using Canvas inbox. The reason being I'm often going to respond with like little math problems and attachments and stuff like that. And those like inbox kind of mangles those and messes them up. So you guys won't see exactly what I intend to send. So, um, it works a lot better if you guys send the, me emails that way. I also have this telephone number here. And that's like, it's not my real number. It's like one of those web numbers. So uh, I, I have that just for the students. You guys can uh, text it. You guys can call it. Um, don't think that you're bothering me or anything like that. That's for you guys to use. Here I have my office hours link. This is like a Zoom link. So anytime we schedule a Zoom meeting um, or, you know, we have a whole class uh, Zoom session or something like that, if that's something you guys are interested in, uh, you'll, you'll use this link and it's always going to be the same one. Next is the textbook. So there's this like little picture here. Uh, you can see it's open stacks chemistry. Uh, this is actually a link. So if we open that up, it'll take us to the online textbook. This is free for you guys to read and use. However, um, there's a lot of resources here. Uh, we're going to be covering chapters one through nine in this class. Um, and Gen Chem is going to, Gen Chem 2 is going to pick up from there. Uh, after that, I have this little message here about how to begin and get started here. And this little get started button that would take you to the module section, which is where the bulk of our course is going to be. But I actually want to skip that first and go and take a look at the syllabus. So here is our syllabus. It starts off with that same information, uh, contact information for me. Um, the important dates is published by the college. There's some important ones to keep in mind here. You know, our first day of class is going to be on the 8th. The last day of class is going to be on the 29th. And then there are some deadlines um, for if you wanted to withdraw and stuff. Um, and some days when the college is going to be closed for... Uh, Martin Luther King Day, and for spring break. Uh, required materials. Uh, the only required material is going to be a scientific calculator. And again, I sent you guys an email about that. It, you don't necessarily have to have a scientific calculator, but it is something nice to have. Um, 
in the course, then we have our course description. We have our prerequisites. You guys would have had to meet these prerequisites to register for the class, so it doesn't necessarily matter. Uh, we have our learning outcomes, uh, a little overview of what we're going to cover in this class, um, and then the laboratory activities that we're going to be doing. <clears throat> Here you're going to find a little bit of information about the textbook. Um, you're going to find this information in the module section as well, in the Getting Started module. Uh, and, but the big thing here is that it is free. Um, you can view it online for free. You can download a PDF if you have uh, kind of not great internet that might be useful to you. You can get an Android app or an Apple app if you want to look at it on your phone or on a tablet or something like that. Uh, I use the Kindle version. I like that. Um, and then if you want a physical copy, you can order a print copy from them or you can get it uh, from the bookstore. I think they're pretty much about the same price, so it doesn't really matter where you get it from. Um, you, uh, contacting the instructor. So I, I really want you guys to feel like you can contact me at any time. I've given you a lot of different ways to do that. Um, and then again, the only thing that I ask is that you do email me from your my Gmail account to my Gmail account. It really helps to make it effective for me. Um, attendance. So this is going to be an online class. So your attendance is going to be based on completing the various assignments for that week. If you go in and do your assignments, then you're going to be marked as present. Homework. Okay. Um, so we're going to have homework uh, almost all every week. Uh, these are going to be from the um, book, and we're not going to grade these. Okay, so they're not going to be graded, and they're uh, you're not going to turn them into me. Instead, what's going to happen is you're going to receive um, my handwritten solution guide for the homework for you to look over. And I, I really go into some depth with each one of the problems. I write in like a lot of notes and stuff like that. It's really meant to replace um, the kind of chalk talk working through problems I would be doing with you guys in class. So you should really be checking that out. Uh, since it isn't graded, you're going to be tempted to not do them at all, maybe. This is really going to be a big mistake, okay? A lot of the problems that you're going to see on the quizzes and on the tests and stuff, they're based on the homework problems. This is really your opportunity to get a sense of where you are with doing the problems and to work through them and to see where... Uh, how basically how you're going to do them all. So uh, you really should take a look at the homework each and every week. Then we're going to go into the lecture quizzes. Uh, most weeks are going to have two quizzes, um, and they're going to be administered through Canvas. They're going to be due on Saturday of each week, okay? Now, I gave you two quizzes, um, not because I want to bog you down with a lot of work, but because I want to give you guys, I kind of want to break it up for you guys. So I highly recommend that you don't wait till Saturday night to do them both. Do at least one of them earlier on in the week. Get a sense for how they work and stuff like that. <clears throat> and um, and then you can contact me if you're having any kind of problems with them or anything like that. Uh, I, I, I give you till Saturday to do them both because I want to give you guys the maximum amount of time. Okay, it's your job to kind of pace yourself through the course and not wait till the last moment to do everything because I can't really help you if it's, you know, an hour before it's due. Uh, but you have a whole week to do them. Um, you're going to get two attempts on each quiz. This is the other reason why there's two quizzes. That way you get four attempts to go through uh, the same kind of the same quiz material. OK, and to ask for help throughout the whole process. Um, there's not going to be any time limit on the quizzes. Uh, and after your first attempt, you're going to be able to see which ones you got wrong. So I'm going to show you guys exactly how that works here in a moment. Um, while you guys are encouraged to collaborate together on the homework problems, to work through them together, if you want to make little study groups and stuff, you, you have to do the quizzes independently. You can't uh, collaborate together on the quizzes. Um, exams. There's going to be two exams. Uh, I've got the dates for them here. 
uh, you're only going to get one attempt at each one of the exams. And they're going to be open for a week, but once you open them up, you're going to have 24 hours to complete them. Um, and I really have a strict policy about the exams. Um, you really need to contact me ahead of time and have a really serious reason if you're not going to be able to do the exam. They're open for a full week. So again, please don't wait to the very last moment to go and do the exam because if you have a problem with your computer or something like that, there's nothing I can do to help you really if it's at the last moment. But if you, you know, get started earlier, then, uh, you know, we can work things out if there's some kind of problem. Uh, laboratory activities. So uh, there's also um, going to be a class where we're going to they're going to be coming in and doing laboratory activities and you guys are going to be doing the same thing as they do. Um, so you're going to have these PDFs and these quizzes and then I'm going to provide you with the data you would have gotten had you been in the uh, lab with us. Um, and then you're going to fill out the reports and stuff, and then you're going to upload them. Uh, again, we'll take a look at that in just a little bit here. Uh, but yeah, you know. Um, so an important note is that I'm going to be continuing to develop this class as we go through it. So even though I have everything up right now, I really like you guys to be able to see everything kind of up front. Um, some things may wind up changing a little bit. Uh, deadlines might change, but they're never going to get moved up. You're never going to have to do things before you normally would. Um, and you know, some of the points and stuff might shift around a little bit for some of the assignments, but, but nothing too major. Uh, and I may also add some extra credit assignments at my own discretion. Um, so student assessment, uh, so our grading system here. So the lecture quizzes are going to be the bulk of it, 40%. The midterm exam is going to be 15%. And the final exam is going to be 20%. Um, I like to do this. That way you guys are mostly being graded on the quizzes. So there's not that gotcha moment of like, oh, I messed up on this one assignment, you know. Um, but there is going to be a midterm and a final that are going to be worth quite a bit. Uh, after you're done doing all the quizzes, though, you're going to be well prepared for the midterm and the final exam. Um, the laboratory quizzes are only going to be 5% and the laboratory reports are going to be 20% of your grade. But there's a big caveat. And what that is, is that students who earn less than 60% in the laboratory portion of the course will receive an overall course grade of zero. So that's a failure regardless of the total points earned. Okay, so I've never had to do this yet, but you do have to get at least 60% in these two categories here or else you're going to wind up failing. And that's the uh, policy of the chemistry department here at Mott. Um, Mott has, uh, the other thing to know is that this is our scale here and you can see it, you do have to get a 94% to get a 4.0. So it's a, it's a kind of a difficult one to get at, but I have a lot of students who manage to do it. So, um, definitely doable. Um, so Ma is offering some tutoring services, uh, and you can learn about that here going to their website. Um, uh, plagiarism, plagiarism is cheating. Don't cheat. If you do, I'm probably going to be able to figure it out. I'm really pretty good at that. Um, there are very severe penalties for it. Please don't put me or yourself in that position. Um, the rest of this is pretty boilerplate language from my, you must have seen in some of your other syllabuses. Uh, a lot of great services here. A lot of great links for you to follow. Uh, if any of this pertains to you, some contact information and stuff, um, some information about the coronavirus here and what they're doing about that and what you need to do to come to campus and stuff and report. Uh, we're not going to be on campus for this class, but you might be for some of your other courses. So, you know, should read up on that. Uh, at the end here, we have our course summary where you have a list of all the assignments and when they're going to be due by. Um, the other thing is that over here in this calendar thing here, you're going to find that in this calendar, uh, you have a whole calendar here with all the list of all the assignments. You see that they're usually always due on Saturdays, but again, 
you have this whole week to work on those and ask me questions about it, okay? Um, they're only due on Saturdays. They're only grouped together because I want to give you the maximum amount of time to complete your assignments, okay? Um, and I think that you guys are all responsible enough to pace yourself appropriately through the class. Um, so the next thing I want to do is take a look at the module section, and this is where the majority of everything is going to be located. So the first thing, this is the landing page, the home page, the first page that we looked at. After that, we have this getting started uh, module. So there's information about the textbook again. And then this is really a nice list of uh, resources if you guys are having any kind of trouble with Canvas and also um, just resources that Mott Community College offers. Um, so it's really worthwhile to at least peruse through there for a second and at least know what kind of things are available to you. There's really, they, they do a lot of outreach with the community and stuff. It, it, it's really great, the work that they're doing there at Mott. Um, after that, you can see that these modules are broken up <clears throat> into weeks uh, with a beginning date and an end date for each one. They all start off with a reading assignment and these are links to the textbook. Um, so the only difference between this and that other link is that this is going to take you directly to the part that we're talking about. So this is going to be like section 1.1 here. So you don't have to go hunting through the textbook for where we are. You got those links there. And then you're going to have some lecture assignments. Uh, the first week is pretty easy. There's just the uh, introduce yourself kind of thing. This is just one of those um, discussion posts. Just, you know, tell us a little something about yourself and I'll be responding as you, as you guys go through that. Um, and then you're going to see the week one homework. And this is just going to be a list of homework problems from chapter one. And then this is a link so that if you click that, it'll take you directly to where those problems are. Well, at least the first one, um, the first page of it. So you may have to, you know, scroll down to find some of the other problems um, in other weeks. Uh, and then we have a quiz here. So let's take a look at this quiz. Okay, so first thing you're going to see with, with the title of the quiz, when it's due, how many points it is. Um, some quizzes are worth more than others. I tried to balance them as we went through the course, but you know, some weeks just are going to cover a little bit more material than others. How many questions they are. Uh, again, no time limit, and you can see that you're allowed two attempts. So to take the quiz, we'll just click there. Um, so the first question here you can see all these ones are multiple choice they're not always going to be multiple choice sometimes you're going to have to do like a drop down box a little matching um some a lot of them are going to be numerical answers where you need to enter in a number um that number is usually unless it specifically says so does not um have to have a certain amount of significant figures you can just kind of put in any old number uh, but you do, it does have to be just a decimal number. It can't have like a unit on it or anything like that. I wish I could do that, but, uh, it can't. Um, so let's look at this first question here. Uh, identify the following statement as being most similar to a hypothesis, law, or theory. Okay. The volume of a sample of gas is indirectly proportional to the temperature of the gas. Okay. I think that's a law. Let's click there. Um, identify the following statement as being most similar to a hypothesis, a law, or a theory. Matter consists of tiny particles that can combine in specific ratios to form substances with specific properties. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't think it's not any of these. Okay. Um, and I don't want to finish the rest of the quiz. So I'm just going to hit this. And oh, it says I didn't finish the quiz. Maybe I should go back and do that. Um, that's what you guys should say. But we're just going to forge ahead. All right. So I can see that for this first question, it doesn't say anything. And what that means is that you got it right. Okay. Um, I can also see that I have used one of my two attempts up here. Okay, it tells me how long I did it. It tells me what score I got out of it. All right. 
Um, so when I go to do my second attempt, I'm going to answer the same thing here. Okay, so that I don't get that one wrong next time. But I can see for the question number two, I got that one wrong. So that means that when I do my second attempt, I need to fix this one and uh, see if I can't get that one right next time. All right, and then it shows me that I didn't answer the rest of these, which was a really inefficient use of my time. So always answer all the questions because at worst, you're going to find out that you were incorrect. And I mean, if it's a multiple choice one like this, well, now you've just narrowed it down to one of three out of you know, one of four, right? So make sure you're answering all the questions, please. Um, I think you guys get how that's going to work. Let's go back to the modules. Um, so then we're going to have the laboratory safety quizzes. Uh, or I'm sorry, this one is just our first week. This is a page... Uh, with information and videos about laboratory safety I want you guys to go through and read. And then here's going to be the quiz for that. So you're going to have all the information that you need to answer the quiz here. And then if we go into this quiz, you're going to see like here's one of the drop down box ones. Um, a couple of multiple choice. This one's multiple answer. So it's got these squares here so you can click different ones here. So you got to choose all the ones that are true in that case. Um, and a lot of these are going to end with a little uh, essay type, like a short answer kind of um, thing where I want you to answer a question that you're going to find here. So this one, for instance, says, describe the proper procedure to follow when chemicals are splashed into your eyes. So what do you do? You know, um, and then you're just going to submit the quiz. Uh, and you, you, you are also still going to get two attempts on this. You can see that you used one of the uh, two attempts here. Okay. Uh, here is where you're going to find a lot of great additional resources. So I kind of structured this where you could just do the reading and then jump right into the assignments if you want. Um, probably not a great idea unless you're like really, really comfortable with it. Um, down here is where I'm going to have a lot of this material that I'm going to have for you. So the first thing I'd like for you to take a look at here is going to be the homework solutions. You can see this is a PDF. You can download that PDF if you want, or you can just view it on here. And I go through and answer all the questions. I do a lot of notes and colors and stuff and really give you a good explanation of how you get to each answer for each homework problem. Um, then there's this PDF here, which is like a PowerPoint kind of thing. Uh, PowerPoint PDF. Um, and then up here, I have a video. This is like a little video lecture where I go through that PowerPoint. And this is all hosted on my YouTube channel that I, um, that's there for the class. So you can check that out. And this is where I go through and I talk about each one of the, uh, the, the whole PowerPoint. So you got that lecture there. So now you're having kind of the chalk talk stuff from the homework solutions and you're getting kind of the PowerPoint-esque lecture thing from the presentations. And then I'm going to have other stuff up here, uh, little notes and stuff like that. <coughs> Additionally, you're going to find these videos here. These are all from Jove, which is a great source. They have a transcript at the bottom and they just kind of explain different um, principles and stuff like that. So if you are going through the reading and maybe you like videos a little bit more, you can check these out to kind of help supplement your reading a little bit. Um, and then it just kind of repeats like that. Uh, in general, but you're going to see next week's going to have a lot more readings. Um, now there's two quizzes and now we're getting into doing actual laboratory stuff instead of just a quiz. Okay. So what's going to happen here is you're going to have this PDF. And this is the same handout you would get in person where you can read through it and learn about what we were going to do that week and the procedure and stuff like that. 
And then at the end of the PDF, there are these uh, data sheets. And this is what you're going to be filling out for your report. Okay. Um, and what you're going to use for data to fill that out is you're going to be given this data here which is another PDF, and this is all the data that you would have collected had you came into class. So you'll just fill it out as if you were there in class doing it and had collected that data. Um, to hand that in to me, there's this measurement report quiz. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna come in here and there's only one question in this guy and it's to upload a file, okay? So I want you to zip up all the files that you have. So after you're done um, uh, making up the whole report and filling it all out um, and you did any extra stuff that you needed to do for that report, like sometimes you have to do an Excel sheet or something like that, um, you're going to zip it all up into one file and then you're going to upload it here. Now I know what you're thinking. Uh, I don't know how to do that zipping up stuff. I wrote, I gave you a little video right here. Um, and for you to look at and if you still having problems then you can ask and I will help you through that. Um, th the other thing is that if you need to use Excel and stuff and you don't want to come to campus and you don't have it, well there are a lot of good alternatives out there. Um, I like LibreOffice uh, is one that I use sometimes. Um, there's also OpenOffice. Uh, so those are free alternatives that you can find. Um, the other thing you could use is just Google Sheets. So that's uh, on a web browser. So that can be used on pretty much anything. Um, and any one of those is going to be able to make you an Excel sheet. So like you're going to be able to save the file as an Excel sheet. Uh, and if you still don't want to do that or if you just want to check this out because it's actually really cool. You can look at this video here and you have access to the mod VDI, it stands for Virtual Desktop uh, Infrastructure. And basically you can connect through your browser to a computer at Mott and use that computer. It's gonna be just like you were um, and using one of the computers on campus. And that's actually pretty nice. So it's, it's almost like having another computer and you're paying for that. So, you know, you, you, you should use this and check it out. Um, and there's a video about how to access that there. The other issue you might have is that, oh, I, I don't have a printer to print out the reports or anything like that. And that's fine. Um, just get, uh, you know, a notebook or something like that and recreate the data sheets. I do ask that you try to format them as closely as possible to the data sheets that are there, you know, recreate the tables and stuff like that, uh, because it's gonna make it a lot easier for me to grade them accurately and give you guys all the points that you deserve for them. Um, and so then you can just, you know, take pictures or preferably scan them, but you know, at least take a decent picture that I can read well and, uh, and then up, zip them up and upload them there. Um, and then you're going to have the same additional resources for this week. And then, you know, there's going to be a lot more supplemental videos as we get into more and more content. And that pretty much repeats over and over again until we get to week eight. Um, in week eight, there is going to be a the midterm exam. So we don't have any more lecture content that we're going to cover. And then we're still going to have this uh, lab that we're going to be doing then. Uh, after that, week nine is spring break, so there's nothing for us here. Um, that's just empty. And then we start repeating the same kind of cycle over and over again until we get down to week 16, which is when we're going to have the final exam. And that's all that there is for that. Uh, well, it's only six days there, but, you know, almost a full week. We're just going to be working on the final exam. And, uh, and that's pretty much it. Um, I don't think there's any, anything else to cover. Uh, you know, I look forward to having you guys in class. And again, if you have any questions or comments, please, um, please feel free to contact me.